Tight, coming to you with another True Scoop story. Now, before I begin, I'm going to ask that you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share me with your friends and families. If you think it's not robbery, these stories are too damn good not to be shared. Now, if you guys want the complete story, head over to my Patreon at True Spook TV. Well, this story is going to take place uh, via Orlando, Florida, all the way up to the state of Texas. It's going to encompass several, several towns in Texas and several influential people in Texas whose names I am going to mention in this story. Now, with me saying that, I want to give you guys a disclaimer that this story was told to me by my deceased grandma. So everything up into the part where she and I and my family interacted with grandmama on this level is word of mouth hearsay. But to me, it doesn't make the story not true. I just don't want no smoke. So the names I use in this story is alleged via my grandmama. She's beautiful now resting in heaven. But this is what she told me uh, what happened during this story. So that's a disclaimer. Uh, can take this as truth uh, in the beginning. Because again, this came from grandma. So enough of me explaining that for the people who get butt hurt over this and say I'm slandering name. This is all made up. This is what somebody told me. It's a story. I can't prove it other than the interactions I had with grandmama during the time that we, you know, dealt with the, the this part, the, the part of the story. So without further ado. So like I said, this story is going to take place via Orlando all the way to Texas. Now there was a story, now there is this legend going around about the goat man of Alton Bridge. Uh, I'm gonna re recite a little bit of what the legend says. So the legend said that there was this uh, wealthy goat, black goat uh, farmer who was, you know, uh, uh, like a heavy hitter in the, in the industry. He had got some goats. He had started selling these goats. He had made him some money. He was doing his thing. So one day he decided to advertise on the Alton Bridge. You know, and the white folks at that time, they was in their fucking feelings. You know, they was in their feelings. They, I oh, know, why the hell a black man gonna sit up there and sell goats? And, you know, because back in the day in, in, in Denton, Texas, the story goes that this black dude, Mr. Uh, Oscar uh, Washburn, uh, was very much, you know, in the goats, but everybody in Texas was in the cattle and chickens and all that type of stuff, pig. So he, you know, started selling uh, goats to the black community. So he decided to advertise on the Alton Bridge and uh, the, the the story go, the KKK went down there and they done something to him. They hung him, threw him over, the tried, they, they beat him up, roughed him up pretty bad, tried to lynch him, they say. Well, after they tried to hang him over the bridge, Evidently, he, they threw him over the bridge. The rope popped, boom, body disappeared because uh, it wasn't hanging from the rope. So they went down there under the bridge to look for it, and then the body disappeared. They couldn't find the body. It then washed down river. They said maybe, you know, an a, a animal came and got it. Just luck of the draw. When the body hit the splash, they didn't hear a splash, but when the body hit the water and the rope popped, say maybe a bear was down there and they took it away some. They came up with all kinds of stories, but let alone because they never found the body of Mr. Oscar Washburn. You know that, you know, they say that uh, his ghost still hunt the bridge. Now that's the local story. You can go look it up yourself in Texas, uh, the Alton Bridge, Denton, Texas, the goat man. Now people, I done gave you a backstory cause that's not my story. I'm giving you a backstory. Now I'm finna go into how me and grandma interacted with this piece here. So grandma said her and granddaddy you know, they had started making a family for themselves, you know, in Motra, Georgia and stuff like that and, and things of that nature. And they said they wanted to move to Florida. So in order to move to Florida, they had to go down there to they had to drive up way to Texas. Now, driving up way to Texas, you know, grandma said, OK, she she want to just make a couple of stops because she had started doing work way back then. Her and grandma did. So while her and grandma did back there doing work for them people. You know, granddad was like, I'll drive you there, but I ain't, I ain't getting into y'all, you, you little woman, little witch business. 
So grandma said her and grandma did drove all the way to, you know, uh, 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 Denton, Te Denton, Texas. And say when they went to Denton, Texas, they met with the family of a rich goat farmer. Now they didn't never, she never told me the name with Oscar Washburn. She gave me another name, but I, I, I would show y'all what that is later on in the story. So she say her and grandma uh, did went up there. They met with a wealthy goat farmer, black man, black woman, all that good stuff. And say, but they wasn't asking her to, you know, to see about goats and none of that stuff there. They were asking her, could they, uh, could she consecrate the land where the goat farm used to sit uh, a little bit over from the bridge in Denton? So grandma, so great grandma deal and uh, grandma, but they are, yeah, shit, this is what we do. And they needed the money because everybody was moving to Florida from Mocha, Georgia. So they go down there. Grandma do a little hocus pocus magic. Grandma did doing her thing and boom, they end up blessing. They end up blessing the damn, the field. So goats can grow there again. Cause from what I hear, like the field was so decimated, grass wouldn't grow. They couldn't keep livestock alive, chickens, goats, or pig. It was like in that town, no livestock would grow. And grandma was like, so what the hell happened that got y'all need to exercise the land with the field? We know y'all bitches in Texas kill people, but then why why are you calling us? Why ain't no white folks here? Why you got to do this? And so from what grandma's saying, her interaction with the lady and the, the, the man and the lady was like, they said their relative was, you know, executed here, Lynch. And grandma said, see, that's why I can't fuck with them people in Texas. Them crackers just love to kill bitches. Say, they'll kill you for anything. You look at their shoe wrong. They'll kill you if you don't compliment they boot. They want to put it on your goddamn neck. And Grandma Dill was like, the gun, you cut it out now. Cut it out now. We, we ain't here to sit up there and pick. And I said, okay. So then Grandma said that after that this brief argument with Grandma Dill, Grandma expressing herself with how shit was going down in Texas, how she hate, she can't stand people from Texas, y'all. She said they did the spell and they consecrated the land. So while they were consecrating the land so it can grow there, Grandma said she ran across a, she said she ran across a rock, but the rock had like, the, she said the rock was in the dirt where they was doing the consecration at, but the rock had like oil on it. And she said she didn't think nothing of it. So she just picked it up and put it in a, a, her side purse. And she said she just kept on, you know, because she said maybe she, she said the rock had a nice little wet glow to it and she was going to set it on the altar, or do something, you know, the, the because she said she liked the way the rock looked. So I was like, cool. So after they got through, uh, they made a little, they fashioned a little doll out of the grass, the dead grass and the sticks and everything that was at the, uh, on the land. And the people paid them rightfully so about uh six seven hundred dollars should they move on here to florida and you know the life gets started so now as a child in every house my grandma ever lived in she used to tell us about this she used to tell us about a monster that lived in our closet by and we called him the one-eyed billy goat man keep this in mind people while i'm telling you she, caught, she used to say, don't ever go in that closet. That closet in that hallway, that's the one that say, uh, the one our Billy Goat man lived there. And if you go in that closet, he gonna come out and he gonna get you. So y'all stay out that closet. Now all the grandbabies knew never to go in that closet. All her kids knew not to go in that closet. No matter what house grandma moved in, when she lived off of Concord, when she lived over there in Ivy Lane, uh, Lake Man Garden Project, Ivy Lane Project, we knew that the that the door in the hallway led up to the one eyed Billy Goat man. So one day we sitting at home and, and, and the power had went out in the house. We in the project. I think no no. We was over there off of Concord downtown Orlando. She had a nice wooden house. And so, you know, I'd say, Grandma, tell me about the one eyed Billy Goat man that live in the closet. You know, my brother and sister had pushed me up to say it. So grandma said, You really wanna know? With your nosy fat ass. I said, yes, ma'am. I said, I want to know. You know, because my brother and sister offered me some Oreo cookies and some milk later on that night. 
So I'm like, shit, I'm finna get some Oreo cookies. And grandma slapped me in the mouth for getting up in it. At least I'm gonna have some Oreos at the end. I was a little fat kid, man. So grandma told us all get in the living room and we'd all lit candles and, and, and stuff. And, you know, it was like a creepy story night. It was during a hurricane, a thunderstorm, whatever. So grandma say, well, you know me and your granny went down there to uh, to Texas to do an exorcism but to remove some spirits. She never used the word exorcism. To, re- to remove some spirits off this land of this uh, black man that those Texas crackers had lynched. Check that now. While they was out there lynching that man, they, they kind of threw him over the bridge and they say they couldn't find the body. So they couldn't do no service, no memorial. But uh, over the course of 20, 30 years that passed, say nothing grew on the land. So they heard about a service and uh, me and your granny went down, man, we did what we had to do. So now it's flourishing. She said, but I want to tell you the truth, what really goes on. She said, what we did, we brought that man back to this house, to us. Say, right now we control the soul. We got him in the closet right yonder. That's why I don't need y'all going in that closet. Because that man that was lynched, he lives in that closet. And if you go in there, he's angry and he's going to get you. So stay the fuck out that closet. So, you know, we all terrified because she went into way more details than that. And I say, Grandma, how you look? And I get this, people. This is what I can't understand. And it's going to lead up to how I'm, I'm doing things today. So she said, I say, Grandma, describe how he looked. So she say, he, he got the head of a goat, the body of a man, and he has a patch over his eye like he had lost his eye so. Say, but the crazy thing about it, he drives a motorcycle. I say, he drives a motorcycle? I say, they had motorcycles back in, you know, 1955. You know, I'm a kid, so I don't know. Say, yeah, he was a he was one of them black men that had a motorcycle, motorbike. He had went to the military, learned how to ride them bikes, and he just loved riding his bike. And he would just ride it on his land because he couldn't ride it on the road. Grandma say that they would kill him, you know. He didn't take no chance, so he just rode around the little property that his daddy left him. I say, his daddy left him? She said, oh, yeah. It get a little bit deeper than that, baby. She said, so let me finish telling you the story. Now, people, again, notice I'm talking how grandma said this happened because I don't need no smoke from these people. These are real people, and this is word of mouth hearsay. So grandma sat up there and said, well, you know, that really, that, that man, uh, she said, you know, that man was really killed as a sacrifice. See, we just went down there and claimed the, claimed the soul. But that land, was that, that, that man that, they, that the KKK lynched, they lynched him in order as a sacrifice to make that land prosperous and grow. But it takes time for a sacrifice to be taken up by the entity they sacrificing it to. Say, it ain't instant. I say, come on, what? She say, boy, shut your mouth and listen. Now we talking. Now all while she's saying is Grandma Dill over there chewing on her tobacco, just sitting down with her feet up, and she just like act like she reading the paper under candlelight. But Grandma Dill, every now and then, Grandma Dill cut her eyes at Grandmama, and I'm looking now. Grandma Dill cut her eyes at Grandmama, like don't say too much, but you know, but Grandmama, you know, was talking to us, we kids. So grandma said, well, the person who really owned the land was this guy by the name of Willie Leslie. Say everybody called him Black Bill because his last name was Black. So he had had some illegitimate kid along with his servants, his maids, his, 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 his you know, his whores. So he had had some illegitimate children and uh, the, they couldn't pass for the white. So he knew that one day. He would have to sacrifice one of his kids to be wealthy and famous or one of his family members. So he chose to let the boy grow up. So as the boy grew up, he had to bequeath him some land for his mama. So he bequeathed him a patch of land over there in Denton where he lived in Fort Worth. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, what? She said, listen now. She said, so he was sitting up there and he had let that man get raised up, sent that boy off to the military to fight. The boy came home. He gave him a patch of land, told him to work it, and gave him some goats. Say, now nah, he did work them goats. So he raised them goats and he got them goats up to a, a, a pretty penny, a nice price for him. So one day, 
they come a calling. They come a calling, and you know the the father came, and the father calls him out there to the bridge and asks him why he advertising so on that there bridge. And he was like, well, he was just trying to you know expand from selling goats to the black community. And, and things of that nature and just say thought anybody may get a goat because he knew his father was a white man he thought he was protected and his father called him out there and say well you're gonna have to stop this right here and we're gonna stop it now no they said well the family said well you know we got to do a sacrifice because the harvest coming in and the cattle coming in and you know the winter finna set and we want when the spring break and the ground thought whatever whatever it is in texas however that go but when the season changed and it's time for harvest, they wanted to make sure they had a harvest, so they have to have a sacrifice. So Grandma said, uh, Mr. Willie Le Le William Leslie ended up sacrificing uh, the person supposed to be known as Oscar Washburn. 